new one that actually creates high value quality jobs. The Honourable Anne Tolly. Mr Speaker, I just want to start today uh, talking a little bit about the fact that this is the Children of Prisoners Week. And Pillars, who are a charity who support prisoners' families, have released the results of a two-year study into children of prisoners that shows that 23,000 New Zealand children have a parent who's in prison. 23,000. And they are seven times more likely, those children, to end up in prison. Now, the national government has set a target of reducing reoffending uh, by 25 per cent uh, by 2007, and that, incre that includes addressing addiction, increasing education and skills training. The most important thing for those children, though, is facilitating the employment of that parent and uh, back into their communities. That's what's going to make the biggest difference for those 23,000 children. And work is happening around New Zealand, but I want to particularly emphasise huge work is being done around skills and employment in Christchurch so that the prisoners can help with the rebuilding of Christchurch. And I note in that uh, Herald article today that the Herald had actually gone out and had a look at the Mount Eden Corrections Facility to look at their groundbreaking family visiting rooms. We know brightly coloured play areas, kitty packs that parents can buy of food. These new ideas are all in place in a prison that is run by private enterprise, run by Serco. And the opposition parties are against Serco, and they are against having new and innovative ideas brought into our prison service throughout New Zealand. Uh, Mr Speaker, but we want to talk about jobs here today. And on that same note, I want to make uh, the point that the new prison that's to be built at Wirree, the, sod was first, the first sod was turned last week, um, I could, we've got a consortium called Secure Future, which is a public-private partnership. We're going to build, maintain and run that prison worry in South Auckland and save New Zealand taxpayers $170 million. That contract with Secure Future will save New Zealand taxpayers $170 million. Do you think the opposition support it? No, the opposition are against it. They're quite happy for New Zealand taxpayers to pay another $170 million to build the prison because they do not support private enterprise getting involved. This, this project in Wirree will create a thousand construction jobs over the next two years. A thousand construction jobs. Do you think that the opposition parties are supporting that? No, of course they're not. Of course they're not. Labor's opposing it, Green's opposing it, and in fact the Green member who just resumed his seat has railed against building a prison in Wirree and having a thousand construction jobs in South Auckland. At the height of this project, that for this company, Fletcher's, will be spending $25 million a month. $25 million a month. Do you think the opposition is supporting that? Oh, of course they're not. They are against this too. When it's constructed, the new Wirree prison will have almost 300 permanent jobs. 300 permanent jobs. So do you think the opposition are supporting that? No, of course. Anything that we put up, this government puts up to create jobs, the opposition are against. I heard when I was up there last week that a local contractor is providing catering on site for that thousand workers. They're talking between 30 and 50 jobs from the local community providing the on site catering. So, do you think the opposition party parties are in favour of this? Let's have a guess. Do you think they're in favour of this project? No, they're against this project from beginning to end. Mr Speaker, this govern national government is focused, first of all, on making sure that the prisoners get good education, get rid of their addiction, get back into our communities and working, first of all, 
And secondly, we are about creating a brighter future. That's right. A brighter future. Do you think the opposition parties are supporting that? Absolutely not, Mr. Grant Robertson. We have it, the government's new economic